shop and we're ready to get started here on part two building um, an insulated beehive uh, from scratch using half inch plywood this is a six and five eighths medium super um, we're gonna build um, a nine and five eighths brood box so this is it um, and I thought, you know, I've got the table saw, I've got the miter saw, that makes things really easy for me. But if you just have basic tools, uh, here's a jigsaw, some glue, a hammer, two inch spiral finishing nails. Spiral is important because they'll uh, grip into the wood and they'll help clamp things down. And a drill with a three, or pardon me, a seven eighths bit and a T-square. I'm gonna build this entire thing with just these tools just to show you that it can be done because that's e it's a lot easier to do it with these tools and I just want to show that it can be done and it can still look pretty good. Okay, here we are. I've got uh, a piece of half inch plywood and these are the plans I highly recommend you getting for doing this. These are the plans from B Source. Com. They're uh, public domain, they're uh, readily available, and we just, we're making pretty well the same size box, but just tweaking a couple of the measurements that we need. So when we're making a deep, the standard hive, deep hive body is nine and five eighths deep. We're going to shave off one inch to eight and five eighths. So, uh, and I didn't mention in the beginning the tools of, of a tape measure and a straight edge. Those are kind of uh, taken for granted. Um, I always say the tape measure is the carpenter's most important tool. And so we're gonna mark this eight and five eighths all the way down. And then we're gonna cut it with the jigsaw and the more careful you are with your line. Uh, the straighter it's going to be and the straighter it is, um, the better off you're going to be. Okay, here we go. Making our line here, all the way across. Okay, so we've drawn our line, eight and five eighths. Um, I'm using uh, a couple saw horses and uh, now we're just going to take a jigsaw and we're going to run it all the way through. I'll get to about halfway with my cut and then I'm going to go to the other side of the table. Alrighty. Okay, we've made our cut. Uh, it's uh, eight and five eighths. Now we're going to be cutting our ends to make the box. The most important thing if you're using these plans and you'll see them at the bottom of the screen is the inside dimensions. That's the most important thing for a Langstroth hive. So the length has to be 18 and 3 8 and the width or the width has to be 14 and 3 quarters. So here the first thing I like to do is I'll cut the length to 18 and 3 8 but I'm going to add one inch for the width. And you'll see why, because we have a half inch sheet of plywood, and so we have to have add a half inch on each side. So the width is gonna be 15 and three quarters. So let's start with cutting our length, which is gonna be the correct dimensions as indicated uh, in the plan at 18 and three eighths. Mark your line, and again, T-square, another extremely handy and important tool for the carpenter. And I'll cut that, and then I'll show you how to do the next one. Okie dokie. So now we got two pieces, 18 and 3 eighths. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add an inch to the width dimension, 14 and 3 quarters plus one inch, 15 and three quarters and we're going to cut two of those So we've 
cut all our wood for the inside portion of this box. We have two pieces that are 15 and 3 quarters, and we have two pieces that are 18 and 3 eighths. Now, putting a box together is pretty easy, but there's one thing that can go terribly wrong here, and that's if you glue this the wrong way. So this is our length. 18 and 3, three eighths is the proper length. So we have to make sure that we're putting the 18 and 3 eighths piece, the 15 and 3 quarters butts up against the 18 and 3 eighths. Do not do it that way or you'll mess everything up. It will make a huge difference. So what's the easiest way to remember that? The easiest way is to put a bead of glue on the 15 and 3 quarter inch piece like this on the end. Then you'll know for sure which end butts in to which end. So now we have our 18 and 3 eighths piece, which is going to butt in to this piece, which we cut an extra inch long, so that we're losing a half inch here. And then when we glue here, we're going to lose a half inch here, which is going to put us exactly where we want to be. Okay, so here's our two pieces, ready to go. Um, and if you have a brad nailer, this is way easier. You just take a brad nailer, pop, 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 and then you can add a couple of these or a couple screws if you want. But if you don't have a lot of tools, I just wanted to show that it can be done. <coughs> it's a little trickier. The first couple nails are definitely going to be the most difficult, and you want to make sure that you use your thumb to flush it up so that the wood's lined up properly. Start off nice and light. So now I can see I can, and I can feel that it's popped in there. So I'm going to push it really hard. And you might have to guide it a little bit. And this is pretty well in. Okay, we're going to flip it. Once you get your first couple nails in, it's going to be a lot easier to stand it up. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so I've uh, put some glue on my other 15 and 3 quarter inch piece. Now it goes on the other end of the 18 and 3 eighths. Don't put it on the other end of the 15 and 3 eighths because then you'll just have to take it apart. Okay, so on the other end of the one that you've just nailed, we're going to put that in. <clears throat> okay, we got three sides done. The box is still going to be a little bit wonky, don't worry about it. So now on our short side, the 15 and 3 quarter sides, we're going to put a bead of glue in, flip it, <coughs> and put a bead of glue in, and it's kind of the easy part because now everything's ready to go. We're just going to pop it here. mistake earlier I put it on the wrong edge and when you measure it you'll know right away so yeah I made a mistake on this one I just took it apart did it again only took a couple minutes you'll know right away when you try to put a frame on there if it's wrong, wrong. I have a saying everything is fixable because mistakes will happen so I drive five nails in here. Uh, and here's another thing. This is going to come through. Okay, so what do you do when a nail comes through like that? And that's going to happen as well. You take a hole punch like this. You can get them at the store. And you tap it. No messing around. Pop it. That nail was a little bent. So just... Uh, Drive a new one in. Okay, so we've finished our box, the inside box, five nails on every edge. 
Now the last thing we want to do is check for square. And let's say I'm going to push this out of square a little bit. It's really important. You can see that big gap in there. It's out of square. It's really important to be square when you're making these boxes, okay? So the, the way to put it back in is you can just do what I'm doing. Use your hands, rub it up, and it'll get square pretty quickly. Just put a little pressure, and this is really close now. So that's pretty well dead square. And it should stay in place if you've cut your wood properly, and you get two corners like that that are dead square, then the other corners, they're gonna follow suit. And they'll all be nice and square. Okay, so you need to do that, and if you're out of square, you've probably not cut the wood properly. Okay, or you've got a wrong joint here. And the last test is to make sure that a deep frame, a full nine and five eighths frame, or actually I think nine and a half, will fit. Now, you're gonna have a little room, it's not gonna go on the bottom, but you're worried about the edges here, making sure that you have that little space in between and that your measurements are correct. And of course, the tape measure is important as well. Your inside dimensions, again, you have a length of 18 and 3 eighths. You check, that one's on the money. And now you have a, w a width of 14 and 3 quarters. And you can see now we're on 14 and 3 quarters because we had our 15 and 3 quarter inch piece. And there's our two half inches right there that have brought it down to 14 and 3 quarters. Okay. So now the next thing to do, we've got our box completed. We've checked it for square. Everything's good. We're now going to cut the insulation pieces that are going to form the middle layer and then we're going to have another half inch layer on the outside of that. So the products that I recommend, here's Dow Styro Span, it's one inch thick uh, and we're going to use a t utility knife. Make sure you got a lot of uh, blade length on your utility knife. So there's two products you can use, the Dow Styro Span, that'll work just fine and then we're going to put a piece of half inch on that or you can use the rock saw, which I'm using now, the rock saw comfort board. It says an inch and a half, it's actually closer to an inch and a quarter. Um, but that's the stuff I'm gonna use. So we're gonna use a pencil as well. And uh, what we do is we mark here the same distance. So our eight and five eighths, we're gonna keep going with that. So we're gonna mark with a pencil. And this stuff cuts really well on a table saw and also with a miter saw, very easy. But I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way just to show you that it's pretty easy. So I've got my straight edge, I have my pencil lines, and I'm not gonna bother drawing a line. I'm just gonna use this knife as a guide so I get a nice straight cut. And again, make sure you got lots of blade on there. The stuff cuts pretty easy, but you wanna make sure you get all the way through to get a really straight cut. So I'm on my lines and I'm just running it. Don't run the knife on an angle, try to run it as straight as you can and give it a few passes until you feel you're all the way through. I felt I was all the way through there, but I'm going to give it one more. I'm going to flip it. See how easy this is. It really only takes a minute to do this. And then there's a nice straight edge ready to go. So I'm here with my uh, the box that we just made, the piece of uh, um, rock saw that we just cut. We're going to measure now, and uh, it's 8 and 5 8, so as you can see, it fits pretty nice and flush with uh, our piece of our box, which is what we want. And uh, we're going to cut it at 19 and a quarter. So again, just a couple little marks. So we have our two long ends here, 19 and a quarter. And now I like to bring this together. Sometimes this stuff, it's got a some ridges here. Give it a little bit of pressure when you're measuring. So these are our two ends. That's gonna be 18 and a quarter. So I'm gonna also measure that twice and then we'll get our two ends of the box. Okay, so Here's our four pieces of insulation that are in. I've cut the first piece here. Don't pull too tight on the insulation uh, because if you do, 
um, you're going to make these pieces too short and then uh, you're going to have to probably start again. So just light pressure on here. This piece is 22 and a quarter. That's the first one I've done. So I'm just going to keep cutting and check your measurements. Don't take my word for it. If you're off a little bit, it'll all show up. Nice light pressure. Benefit of the doubt, I'm going to give that 19 and 1 eighth. So I've cut my piece 19 and 1 eighth and again, <coughs> I'm going to glue it and I'm going to nail it. And then we'll keep going around the whole deal. And so we'll keep going around a circle or the square. Um, and that way too, if you're off a little bit on your cuts or your jigsaw cuts are a little wobbly, don't try to cut pre-cut each one when you're doing this with a jigsaw because you might be off a little bit. So it's better to just uh, cut each one, nail it, and then keep going around. And the last piece is going to be, and I'm going to squeeze this one a little bit because uh, the nails are pinching and you want to just really get rid of these little gaps in here. So this one here you can put a little pressure on. It's your last piece and you want to make sure everything's going to fit properly. So this one here I'm going to make 19 and 5 eighths. Okay, so this is the last piece. I've nailed the last one in. Just going to tighten it all up. And this is where it, sh it should all come together pretty nicely. I'm going to put this nail in and then uh, here, make sure it's perfectly flush. All right, so here we are. We're back. Um, we've finished gluing uh, the outer shell here, the half inch plywood outer piece. Have our uh, one and a half inch rock saw comfort board and then we have our inner uh, piece here so we got our layers the next step is to um, cut and put on this will be the bottom of the hive first of all the the covering piece here just under two and a half and uh, my first measurement here is uh, just over or part of me um, it's around 23 and a quarter so I've pre-cut these I did it again with the jigsaw so it's a pretty simple process. You just uh, put your glue in. I'm using PL Premium. This will be on the bottom of the hive. So the bees won't really be exposed too much to it. And uh, I just like using this, bee, this uh, glue whenever I know that the bees are probably not gonna be in contact with it a lot because it's uh, a very, very good glue that uh, holds up well to the elements. So uh, here we go. So we're just going to tack it in with nails. Okay, so the bottom now is finished and everything's flushed right up to the edges. So uh, finishing nails and PL Premium Glue. So we're going to flip it over to the top. Now, with the top, we have to have a lip uh, on which the frame can sit here. So you're going to have your 10 frames all the way across. And so we can't have uh, this covering piece all the way. We can't have it uh, edge to edge. It has to have a little bit of a, allow for a little bit of a gap here so that the frame can sit inside that. So if you've done your measuring and you're using one and a half inch rock saw, you've got a half inch plus one and a half plus another half. So one and a half one, uh, plus or half plus one and a half is two plus another half is two and a half. Now with that two and a half, you want to take off uh, three eighths of an inch here to allow for this, uh, for your frame to sit in here. So that means that on your half inch piece of plywood, you're going to have a one eighth of an inch overhang that you can secure, and I use white glue, you can secure this top piece onto. So that means with your two and a half here, take away three eighths, that makes this piece two and one eighth. Um, and my length is 19 and three quarters. That's what it should be. 
Um, but measure because when you're cutting with a jigsaw, if we were cutting with a table saw or using our miter saw, the uh, cuts are exact, you have really straight cuts and your numbers are really precise. When you're cutting with a jigsaw, things can be a little bit wavy, even if it's only like a sixteenth or an eighth. It adds up, so you might have one side where the cut was a little wonky, out by an eighth of an inch compared to the other side. So just make sure you measure that. So anyways, here's a two and an eighth inch piece, which uh, we're gonna nail in and tack, and then we'll get our other two and one eighth inch piece. And then from there, you can see when those are secured, we're gonna have a little place for our frames to sit in. Okay, so we have one edge in, and uh, you can see that bead of white glue. I hope you can see it. Uh, I'll show you from start to finish putting this one in and nailing it in. So again, it's PL Premium uh, on the outside, so just on the outside edges. You can see here too, I was a little bit off. There's a bit of a gap in there, but there's enough insulation around here that's not really going to make a big deal. I can stuff some in there and recut it, but you know what? The bees, they're going to be happy and they're not going to run off just because of that. And they won't even know it's all sitting in there. So, and then some white glue on the inside. And then we're going to take our piece, put it down here. I want to show is I'm going to toenail a couple of these nails that are going to hook into here. So I've got my white bead glue here which is sticking out, you can see, and I'm going to have a nice seal. I'm going to press that in and that's going to seal it up real nice just like I did over here. But here I'm not putting the nails in straight, I'm going to put them on an angle. Don't put them on too much of an angle, they'll pop out, but that's toenailing. And that'll uh, secure this down here while it's drying. You only need a couple nails, you don't need a lot. Because the glue is going to add the bond, but what the toenailing does is it makes, it presses everything down. And then the last thing, just use your finger with that white glue and run it here and kind of just stick it into the corner, that little crevice right in there, and that'll seal it right up. And you also take away the use on the other sides. And then the last process is just the last step. Same thing, just cutting here, putting these pieces down. I know these ones will be two and a half. So uh, I'll get that done and then uh, we'll do the next step. Okay, so I've got everything glued in. We've got the bottom done and the top. This thing sealed in and you can see it's, it's a nice really strong hive. When everything's put together, this thing is a bulletproof hive. I don't even know if but anyways, uh, and, and the last check I like to do is actually put in a frame. So this is uh, a full deep frame right here. And you just run it across and it's nice and, nice and smooth. It'll hold the 10 frames perfectly. So now the next thing is vent holes. These are what they look like here and here. And I do a cross vent because you're gonna have an entrance here where there's gonna be wind coming in, a little breeze. If it's hot in the summer, you'll have air coming up here through the bottom board and you'll have an inner cover with an entrance here. So they're going to be getting a lot of clean air coming in this way. I like to cross vent a little bit as well. I think cross venting is nice in the winter too, because if it's windy, the frames kind of stop the wind from blowing through, but at the same time circulate some air in there. So what we have to do now is measure. And if you've used the rock salt product, and I, so like I say, cross venting, it's perpendicular to the way the frame is. So it's this way, not that way. So it's the length ways, the 18 and 3 8 ways, is where we're going to put our vents. So um, my width here, because I use the one and a half inch rock saw, is two and a half. If you use the dowel styro span, you're going to be two inches. So here I'm going to cut a two and a half inch dowel. We need four of them. One, two, three, four. So I wanted to just a quick little thing on cutting doweling with a jigsaw. A little tricky, but 
I'm just going to mark two and a half inches, and I make more than one mark because you can't use a T square with a piece of dowel. It's kind of awkward. So I kind of go maybe a third of the way over, and then I put another mark in at two and a half. So I have two reference points for my jigsaw. I like to. Uh, you can cut it here on a flat surface. I like to have a little corner. It braces it a little bit. And again, you're not going to cut out really far away like this. You're going to cut in pretty close. So I have my first mark, and I'm just going to rotate around as I cut. And so then I have my other mark as a reference, just to try to make it as square as I can. Of course, a miter saw takes two seconds, easiest way to do it. But if you're limited with tools, this works just fine. The doweling is an inch and a half. I use one and a half inch dowel. And you're going to need a one and a half inch hole saw. And uh, so then we're going to punch through here. You can see the same process in part one of this series. We punch through here in three parts. First layer is a uh, half inch plywood. Then we punch through the layer of insulation. And then we punch through the last layer. So I stop at each layer. And you'll need a nail for these types of bits because the material gets stuck in here and you have to pull it out with the nail and then take that material out, make sure the drill is nice and clean and, uh, and then continue to cut. So I'll go through the whole thing and show you what that looks like at each phase and just wiggle it around a little bit to help it along. <laughs> So you can see there's a hole that's been made, so I'm going to cut through that here. up with uh, some carpenter's glue on the edges here and let's see how she wants to go in there. You can kind of help it through the other way. And this one is going to stick a little bit. And then I'll take the hammer and that helps it through the rest of the way. And so there you go. Nice thing about white glue, it cleans up really easy. So if you get it on your fingers, it's 
not a big deal. All right, so we're gonna gotta get our four, hole, four holes here. Next step is to drill through this, but we have to wait for the glue to dry before we can do that. All right, here we are. This is the last step in uh, doing the construction part of this hive. Um, we've built it using just a jigsaw and a drill and a hammer and some nails. Um, the last phase here is to drill the vent holes out. Um, these vents are important because uh, it gives air circulation for the bees and um, I cover these vent holes with a screen. This is just some hardware cloth. You can get it at any building center. Make sure that you use uh, metal and not nylon. Uh, the metal, I think it's aluminum, uh, hornets cannot chew through the metal. They can chew through the nylon and uh, you don't want your bees, you don't want a, a hornet to chew a hole through one of these screens and then your bees are fighting hornets on two fronts. It's a pretty tough battle for your bees to win. So use metal, um, hardware cloth. So 7 8 drill bit is what I'm using and that really is all dependent on your cork. I have a 7 8 cork here. So the cork size really dictates the size of the drill. So I'm gonna drill this through and then we're just gonna uh, clean it out and put a screen on it. Okay, so we're done. We've uh, finished our uh, deep box using half inch plywood and using only a jigsaw, a drill, and um, a hammer and nails. So it can be done very simply. Um, you know, it's not cut and perfect. There's a couple edges here. Um, from cutting with a jigsaw, it's not a 100% dead, dead cut. All your cuts, there's a couple wobbly ones here. I'm gonna sand it down, but it's a good hive. It's solid and uh, it'll last you for years. And it's, it's a beautiful hive. Things slide really nicely. The last thing, like I said, I'm gonna do is I will uh, sand this right down with 80 grit, give it a good sand. And then after that, you can do two things. You can put primer on here or you can put stain. And primer and stain are actually the same thing. Primer is used to, uh, as a pre-coat for paint. So you can use an exterior water-based primer and put it on here and that'll seal the wood. If you want after, you can paint it um, or you can just use uh, an exterior water-based stain and just put it on the outside after you sand it, clean it up. Uh, maybe in the last videos, we'll show a completed hive that's been sanded. So thank you very much for watching.